Hi everyone, it's Mike from Arkansas Heirlooms again. I was hoping I could speak about microbes with you tonight. And the first microbe that I'd like to speak about is Lactobacillus. And Lactobacillus is a product, is a microbe that we collect using rice wash and milk. And I'm going to show you how we do that. I'm not going to get into the steps, but I'm going to talk about it and I'm going to show you the products actually. Here we go. This is lactic acid bacteria serum. Labs is what we call it for short. And labs is what we do is we take rice and we mix it with water in a jar and shake it up a little bit. And we collect that rice wash off and we cover the, the jar with you know, cheesecloth or something like paper towels even. Just something to keep, you know, keep it somewhat protected. And, you know, believe it or not, those microbes will come right through that material right into your liquid. And then after a couple days, the rice wash will get a little scummy on the top. And that's when you will skim off that scum and collect the liquid. And you'll pour milk into that liquid. And that milk draws the other part of the mixture, the other microbes. And you end up getting <clears throat> a, a liquid that we call whey. And you get the curds, which we take the curds, and those are a really good, <clears throat> excuse me, they're a really good probiotic. They're good for humans and for pets. You can uh, put a little bit in a smoothie, or you can, use, you can use the liquid in a smoothie too, by the way. And this is helping your microbiome, your gut microbiome, which if you know anything about the gut microbiome, you know that it's the engine for your immune system. So you're fighting diseases by keeping your gut healthy. And, you know, food is medicine, guys. It really is. So, you know, that's curds and whey, what we call lactic acid bacteria serum, labs. And I use that for a lot of things. Like, I'll teach you how to use this with molasses in the future to Bokashi compost. It's a really cool way to compost your food scraps in a bucket and the cool thing about it is this kind of composting allows you to throw dairy and bones in there too which is you know a good sources of calcium and phosphorus and you know all kinds of good stuff for your garden but usually you can't compost that stuff but with this and a bakashi composting system you can okay i'm going to go to the next product which is liquid bone meal now, liquid bone meal is, you can collect, make this yourself a di few different ways, but you can buy it. This is a p purchased one. It's a really good one. And liquid bone meal with, in this way is made with phosphoric acid, which, you know, phosphoric acid is in the soil. It's a byproduct of organic processes. So I feel good about using it to some degree. You know, uh, I, my whole philosophy is if it hurt, hurts the soil, then, you know, it hurts the plants and it hurts you. So I try not to hurt the soil. That's my foundation. Well, now this stuff right here, you can make it using Korean natural farming practices, which I can teach a few recipes to you over this summer. I'm hoping I can get into that and the fermenting plant foods. And you can use eggshells to make what's called a WCA. Uh, you know, and there's other different recipes too. I'll get into all that later. But the cool thing about this product is you can use it a couple times a week. You can use 30 milliliters or so per gallon. And you may have to adjust the pH because, you know, the, this is a, you know, acidic product here. You know, you want to keep it up between 6.2 and 6.8 for your tomatoes. Seven's okay. Neutral's good. But you don't want to go any higher than that on alkalinity. No lower than 6.2 on acidity. And you can, you know, get a, a good meter off of Amazon for that. But, you know, like, why use liquid bone meal? Well, the cool thing about it is if you use it a couple times a week, where you might, like, get two or three tomatoes off of flower cluster, you'll get three or four, and you'll get larger tomatoes for it. So it really does help yield to use this bone meal. You know, I try not to you know, get too ridiculous with it. Some people go even higher, like 60 milliliters per gallon. I don't do that. But, you know, stick with me and I'll teach you different ways to make this stuff by home at home using, you know, squash and flowers and different things so you won't even have to buy it. All right, this is the last one. This is a purchase product. And the reason I'm showing you this SLF, uh, SLF 100, yeah, is because it really is an amazing microbial product. It has all this different kinds of microbes in it that I'm trying to see if it shows any. 
I don't have the list. I'd have to go online and get the list, but it's a whole bunch of good ones that they've taken from like soils of plants that are salt hardy, you know, so that this is really good if you have uh, salt issues with your soil. But it's just, man, if just a little, just a few milliliters of this stuff and a gallon of water, right, on your plants will really rev up the soil food web down there, the the my the the soil's microbiome and i've had really good luck with it and it's it's a little pricey but you get you don't you just need such a little amount of it so if you are you know interested in purchasing products i really recommend this slf 100 it just makes everything in your soil work better it, your plants just you know take up the food better they take up the nutrients way better when this is in there so those are the products that i want to talk about tonight we make this at home you can buy this. You We make the curds in the whey at home. You can buy the liquid bone meal or there's some Korean natural farming recipes for it. And there's SLF 100, which really is a purchase product only. But hey, man, it's really good. Thanks for listening and watching.